Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked potato puffs. That's right, they said there was no way to do a baked version of these famous French fried potato puffs, which go by the name Palme Dauphine. But you know what? I think we did. And for the record, I'm just assuming that's what they said. I mean, no one's ever reached out to me directly. But I'm pretty sure someone said you can't do these in the oven. And you know what? If those people do exist, they were just proven wrong. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started by making some mashed potatoes, which I'm going to do by simmering some Yukon Golds in some salted water for however long it takes for them to get very tender, but not falling apart. Okay, if we cook these too far, they're going to absorb water, and our puffs might get too heavy. Okay, we're making puffs, not lumps. So we're going to want to be testing that with a knife. And when they are, in fact, very tender without falling apart, we'll go ahead and drain those and then mash them, which I'm just going to do using this regular potato masher. All right, if we were in culinary school, they would make us use what's called a ricer, which is basically a press that has a screen and you push the potatoes through. And it's nice because you don't get any lumps. And if you have one and you're feeling fancy, go ahead and use it. But just a regular masher like this will totally work. And then once that's mashed, what we're going to need to do is absolutely nothing. Okay, just simply set that aside while we move on to make the other major component, which is, believe it or not, the exact same dough we use to make cream puffs and eclairs. No, I'm not kidding. So what we're going to do is bring some water and butter and a little pinch of salt to a boil over medium heat. And as soon as our butter's melted and that starts to bubble, we'll go ahead and stir in some flour. And then using a wooden spoon, what we'll do is cook this for a few minutes, still over medium heat, until it basically pulls together to form a dough. And all that stuff should pull semi-cleanly off the bottom. And a few minutes later, if everything goes according to plan, you should end up with something that looks like this. And once that happens, what we'll do is transfer that into a bowl and kind of spread it out a little bit because we want to let this cool for about five minutes or so, so it's not too hot for the next step, which would be to mix in one whole egg, which as you can probably see I've beaten ahead of time because it does mix in a little better that way. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in with a spatula. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do usually use a whisk, which does a much faster job, but once it comes together, it all gets stuck inside the whisk and you have to use a spatula anyway to get it off. So I figured I would save a step and while it will take a little bit longer, eventually if you keep smearing and smashing, mixing and mashing, eventually you should end up with a very, very soft, very sticky dough. And once that's been accomplished, we are now ready to mix our two components. So we'll go ahead and take exactly one cup of our mashed potatoes and add it to our pâté choux, which I believe is the French name for that dough. And we'll go ahead and mix that with our spatula until well combined. And I should mention, you can change the ratio between potato and dough depending on what kind of texture you want to end up with. Okay, with less potato, you're gonna end up with something that's a little breadier, more like a fritter, or maybe like a potato-flavored donut. Whereas with a higher potato concentration, you're gonna end up with something that's more like a deep-fried mashed potato, which, by the way, is what I prefer. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and give that a mix, at which point we're gonna give it a taste for seasoning. Because even though there's a little salt in the dough, and we cooked our potatoes with salt, we're probably gonna need some more. So I did add some more salt, as well as a little shake of cayenne, plus a very small, but possibly very important, grating of fresh nutmeg. Okay, just a little touch, mostly to honor the traditional Palme Dauphine recipe. And we'll go ahead and give that one last mix. And by the way, if you were gonna add something like crumbled bacon or green onions or chives or something like that, this would be the point you'd do that. All right, I'm just showing you the basic chords here. You have to write your own song. So feel free to accessorize this. I mean, you guys are after all the bots of your mashed potato tots. And that's it, once everything's mixed together, we are ready to cook these, which traditionally would mean scooping this into a deep fryer. But we're not doing that. As you may have heard, we're gonna bake these. So I went ahead and scooped those into a very well buttered mini muffin pan. And I was really hoping this would work, cause generally baking is a lot easier than deep frying. So I went ahead and scooped those in. And I was thinking about giving them the old tappa tappa, but I didn't. I left those as is, and then I headed to the oven where I popped those into the center, or sort of the center, of a very hot 450 degree oven for about 20 minutes, or until they were golden brown and puffed, and looked like this. So at this point I was very happy with how they looked, but I was kind of scared they had stuck. But much to my delight, they did not, and they actually came out very easily. And as I was lifting these up, transferring them onto the cooling rack, I really was amazed at how light they felt. I'm talking feather light. 
So I thought that was a really good sign, and I couldn't wait to try one. But I did, for a couple minutes. Okay, we don't want to eat things that are so hot we can't taste them. So I let those cool for about five minutes before breaking one open so you could see what was going on. And what's going on is this. A super light, airy, fluffy mashed potato encased in a buttery golden brown crust. All right, what part of that doesn't sound like something you really want to eat? And they really did taste and feel every bit as good as they looked. So I think the name Potato Puff really fits. Although mashed potato top would be pretty good too. And then as far as serving these, I think there's a lot of different directions we can go. And right here I'm serving them with a green chili aioli, which is nothing more than my famous green chili pesto mixed into some mayonnaise. And yes, I should probably show you how to make green chili pesto. But anyway, that made for an absolutely spectacular dip for these warm puffs. And since I'm going to eat all of these, I can totally double dip if I want. So as far as doing these as a warm snack or appetizer, they definitely pass the test. But I also think they would make a great and very interesting breakfast potato next to a couple fried eggs. And in the spirit of full disclosure, I fully admit I'm a mashed potato fanatic and love any and all kinds. So I knew I was going to love these. I just didn't realize how much. So these really did work well with the eggs and the dip. But these would also make for a great side dish for something like a steak, which is basically what the original fried recipe is used for. Speaking of which, I did save a little bit of the batter so I could show you what these look like fried. And while I did want you to see the difference, not enough to actually get my deep fryer out and do these correctly. So as you can see, I'm just shallow frying these in a little bit of oil for a few minutes at, let's say, 375 until nicely browned. And while the inside's going to be pretty much the same whether you bake these or deep fry them, the outside's definitely going to be darker and crispier. And I would have done the fork scrape, but these were too small. So then I tried rubbing one on the rack, but that didn't work. So you'll just have to settle for the sound of me biting one. And like I said, the outside is going to be a lot crispier. Although these could have used another 30 seconds, since these were still a little bit underdone in the center. Nevertheless, I still enjoyed those very much. And they really are amazing fried. Which is something to keep in mind. If you're one of these families that likes to deep fry their turkey. I mean, you're already going to have a big vat of hot oil, so why not? But anyway, that's it. How to make the classic palm dauphine. Whether you end up deep frying them or baking them in the oven. If you like mashed potatoes and you like puffs, I really think you should give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.